All right, here we go. This is section 2.3 continued, and it is over um, kind of a little second unit here on finding zeros and factors. And I first kind of want to show you that uh, I found a new writing tool here that is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it writes like this. Now, you may think, oh, that's not that cool, but wait a minute. Look at this. Section Two, uh, hold on, 2.3, yeah, it writes like a rainbow. Pretty awesome, I know. That's how we're going to roll with this lesson. All right, here's the idea. I'm going to give you a function. For example, here is the function f of x equals, oh, it's kind of a weird one here, 48x cubed minus 80x squared plus 41x minus 6. Now, this is a cubic, which means it has 3, 2, 1, zeros. It has to have at least one zero, because it's a cubic. That means one side's going down, one side's going up. So sooner or later, it's got to cross the x-axis at least once. So what I want to do here is we have to find the complete factorization and all the zeros. If you can find factors, you can find zeros. Yeah, keep looking at the writing. It's awesome, I know. But I have to give you a little bit of a hint here. I can give you a hint in terms of a zero or in terms of a factor. So I'm going to give you a zero here. So I'm going to tell you that one known zero is two-thirds. And you have to use this zero to find the other factors. And what we need to do with that given factor is synthetic division. So you're going to use that known zero right here on the outside. And then you're going to bring this guy over here. Make sure you got all of your coefficients, 48, negative 80. I like to really spread this out, uh, 41, uh, negative 6. So I got my third degree, my second, my first, and my no degree. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is drop down that 48 and 2 thirds times 48. What is that? Well, if you're like me, you may need a calculator, which is okay, and that is 32. So that's a 32 that goes right here. Negative 80 plus 32 is negative 48. So I get a nice 48 right there. And 2 thirds times 48 again is going to be a negative 32 this time, and 41 plus a negative 32 is 9, and I know this is going to be crazy, but guess what, 2 thirds times 9 is 6, that's right, so you end up getting a remainder of 0 right here, just like we were supposed to, because I told you that was a 0 from the very beginning. So we're left with the function 48x squared minus 48 x plus 9. Now, what we have to do now is this is a quadratic. We already know 1, 0. This quadratic can easily be factored or easily use the quadratic formula to find the remaining zeros. So, and or factors. Remember, they're the same thing. So, let's see if we can factor this. Um, I'm first going to see, can I pull something out here? Um, uh, I don't think 48 is divisible by 9, but is 48 divisible by 3? Yeah, okay, so here's what I can do, is I could factor out a 3. It'll just make this life a little bit easier for me. And I get 16x squared minus 16x plus 3. And most people might want to jump and use the quadratic formula if you need to right here. Um, but hopefully, you can just go ahead and factor this guy here. So let's see if we can factor this. Let's see. So I got that 3 sitting there. Can't just ignore it. Let's see. 16 would be a 4x and a 4x. And, oh, this is good because the only way to get a 3 is a 3 and a 1. Now, let's make sure this makes 16. That's going to be a, uh, let's see, on the outside, that's going to be a 4x. The inside that's going to be a 12x. Uh, 4 and a 12, yeah, that can make a 16. So let's see here, I need them both to be negative, that way I get a negative 3x on the outside. Uh, let's see, let's double check this, I just want to make sure this works. So negative 4x on the outside, negative 12x on the inside, that does make a negative 16x. So it does look like I have found the factoring. Now if you don't like factoring that, if you thought that was hard, feel free to use the quadratic formula if you need to. So my complete factorization would be the two factors that I just found. Don't forget to add on, or you could put in the front, I don't care, the factor that was given, and that would be x minus the um, two-thirds. Um, but I'm assuming most of you would not put x minus 2 thirds. You'd probably replace that, and that's an arrow, um, with 3x minus 2. 
And so that would be your factors there. You'd have the 3x minus 2. That was the given one. Again, that was from the 2 thirds. And then you have the 4x minus 1, 4x minus 3, and the 3 in front. So got all my zeros. Let's list the zeros because that's also part of your job is to list the zeros. The 2 thirds was given. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a positive 3 fourths. And I have one more zero here of positive one fourth. So there's my three zeros. There's my complete factorization. What do you do with that three? Just leave it out in front like that, and you're good to go. All right, so let's scroll down here. Um, let's keep scrolling down here. Hold on a second. Sorry. Okay, let's do another one here. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to change the color. I know that, that was like super awesome pen color there. But uh, I'm going to shrink it up here and use a different color here. So we got f of x. That's a hot pink. Hopefully you guys can see that um, hot pink. I think you can. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Maybe you can make it a little easier to see if you make it bigger. All right, another function here. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 6. Now this time I'm going to get a little nasty on you. The hint I'm going to give you is that x equals... Radical 6 is a known 0. Now, here's the best news of the day. We learned that these square root zeros always come in pairs. So I shouldn't have to tell you, and I'm not going to tell you, you just need to know on your own, that you automatically already know that negative radical 6 is another 0. So let's go ahead and use that 0 with synthetic division to figure out my remaining zeros. So I'm going to put the radical 6 on the outside. I'm going to drop down here. Here's my synthetic division bar. i got a 1, 2, negative 3, and negative 6. Now, I do suggest when you work with square roots, things are going to get a little fuzzy here. So please spread things out. Use lots of room. Don't cram everything together, okay? All right, drop down the 1. Boom. Radical 6 times 1, radical 6. So far, so good. Everything's going right. Ah, here's an issue. 2 plus radical 6 is some odd irrational decimal, so I'm going to have to leave it as 2 plus radical 6. Please do not give a decimal there because it's irrational. and You won't be able to convert it back to a number that makes sense. So just bear with me. Trust me. Things will work out. Now, over here, I'm going to do something called DW. That's my dirty work because I have to figure out what is radical 6 times 2 plus radical 6. All right, here I go. Radical 6 times 2 is 2 radical 6. Radical 6 times radical 6 is radical 36, which is, of course, 6. So now I'm going to come back up to my problem here. I'm going to put 6 plus 2 radical 6. I just put it in the, the order with the uh, real part first. That's okay. Or, I'm sorry, the whole number there first, the 6. Now I'm going to add. Now the negative 3 and the 6 can be added together. The 2 radical 6, nope, sorry, it's got to stay in the back. So I get positive 3 plus 2 radical 6. And i got to do a little bit more dirty work here. Radical 6 times 3 plus 2 radical 6. Distribute, I get a radical, I'm sorry, 3 radical 6. Distribute back here, let's see what I get. Um, okay, I get a 2 times a radical 36. Radical 36 is 6, so I get 2 times 6 is 12. And that's an issue. What did I do wrong? I had to have done something wrong. Because uh, I should be getting a 6 right here, right? I shouldn't be having anything left over. Okay, let's back up and find Mr. Princhak's mistake. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 6. That is right. I didn't do anything wrong there. Radical 6 is the 0. Drop it down. Multiply radical 6. 2 plus radical 6. Did I do this right? Let's see. That's radical 6 times 2 is 2 radical 6. And that is a 6 back there, so I get that right. Negative 3 and 6 is 3. Um, I should be getting a 0 right here. What is going on with this problem? Let me make sure I wrote it down right, because that's usually the problem that you guys have, is copying it down right. I did copy it down right. Oh, I see the problem right now. I was wrong. It's not radical 6. It should be a radical 3. So you know what? I'm going to grab the eraser here. And uh, hopefully I didn't waste too much of your time here. Um, but I'm sure uh, you're going to be mad at me. But you know what? This is lesson learned. Obviously, this is completely um, done on purpose. Because this just goes to show, Nick Bartolovic, that you need to make sure that you copy the problem down right. 
All right, uh, so let's see here. Let's kind of back all this up right here. Okay, let's start the problem all over again. We're good to go here. We're writing, we're writing, and let's see here. And um, we have a radical 3 here, and that means negative. Okay, now we're right on track. It's radical 3. Drop it down. That's radical 3. That's 2 plus radical 3. Let me come over here and do radical 3 times 2 plus radical 3. And I get, of course, 2 radical 3 plus radical 9, which is 3. So I get 3 plus 2 radical 3. And now look at this is going to work out. Negative 3 and positive 3 make 0. So I get 2 radical 3. A little bit more dirty work. Radical 3 times 2 radical 3. I get 2 radical 9. Radical 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And I get a 0. Okay, I got it right. All right. Now, I know this looks ugly, but remember, you have another 0 to work with. So let's do synthetic division a second time this time with radical 3. So I had a third degree. I dropped it down to a second degree. I'm about to drop it down to a linear first degree function. 1 comes down, multiply, get negative radical 3. Look how I don't have to do dirty work here. Those cancel. I get a 2. Multiply, get negative 2 radical 3. Those cancel, make 0. And I had a third degree, moved it down to a second degree. Now I moved it down to a linear first degree. So I got x plus 2. That is done. That's a factor. Obviously, the 0 to that is negative 2. Don't forget about your other factors of x plus radical 3 and x minus radical 3. So that's a little bit of a mistype by me. We were able to finish that problem up, and um, pretty easy problem to do there. All right, let's keep moving down here, and let's do one more problem. Hope I'm not wasting too much of your time here. I apologize. And we got one more to go here. So the function I'm going to give you here is x cubed, pretty innocent looking function, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. And I'm going to tell you that the known 0, get ready for this, is 1 plus radical 3. Now, once again, that's what I'm telling you, but without me having to tell you, you should automatically know that the other 0 is 1 minus radical 3. So I'm going to be able to work this out real quick. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Give yourself lots of room on a problem like this. Drop it down. I got a 1. I got a negative 3. I got a 0. And I got that 2 right here. So there's the 3, there's the 2nd degree, there's the no degree, and there's the 2. All right, so drop down the 1, multiply, that's easy, 1 plus radical 3. Add, that's easy, negative 2 plus radical 3. Time for some dirty work. I'm going to do the dirty work up here real small, okay. So I got 1 plus radical 3 times negative 2 plus radical 3. And I'm going to do a little bit more dirty work here. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Outside is a 1 radical 3. Inside is a negative 2 radical 3, and last is a radical 3, and a radical 3 makes plus 3. So the 3 and the negative 2 make a 1, and a radical 3 minus 2 radical 3, since they both are common terms, since they both have a radical 3, I get 1 minus 2 is negative 1 radical 3. So that's what goes right here, 1 minus 1 radical 3. Now, add these together, the 1 and the 0 obviously make 1, 1 minus I'm just going to say radical 3. It's the same thing. And let's see. i got to multiply one more. Now, if I'm doing this right, and I hope I'm right this time, I better have a negative 2 right here. So let's see here. 1 plus radical 3 times 1 minus radical 3. 1 times 1 is 1. Outside's a negative radical 3. Inside's a positive radical 3. That's a good sign because those are going to cancel. And lastly, I get negative 3 because radical 3 and radical 3 is 3, but don't forget the negative there. So negative 3. And look, this works out perfect because the radicals cancel. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. I get my 0 there. Now, remember, this looks odd. It's like, what are you talking about? I got these coefficients that are radicals. Don't worry about it. If you bring the other 0 down, I knew the other 0 was 1 minus radical 3. Now everything will be really easy. Drop down the 1. 1 minus radical 3 times 1 is 1 minus radical 3. Do not need dirty work for this. Your radical 3s cancel. Negative 2 and 1 makes negative 1. Multiply once again. Negative uh, 1 minus radical 3 times negative 1 makes a negative 1 plus radical 3. And look at this. Radicals cancel and the 1s cancel, giving me a 0 there like I should. So I had a third degree. I had a second degree. Now I have a first degree. And that's really easy. X minus 1. So there's one factor. The other factors would be from the givens. X minus 1 minus radical 3. And the other one would be x minus 1 plus radical 3, creating these three, three zeros, 1, 
one minus radical three, I'm sorry, one plus radical three and one minus radical three. So that's basically what you're going to be doing in Friday's worksheet. Hopefully those make a lot of sense to you. Apologize for uh, the messiness, but I think this new pen is it's awesome, this writing. So anyway, I um, hope everything made sense there. And the whole idea of these problems is to use the givens and use synthetic division to find all the factors and all the zeros.